not tonight stress not today stress. yeah this is much more this is much more centered can you hear your voice through yeah the headphones? yeah all right that little um aggregate device okay. one of my favorite words because we were traveling with it, I took it out from underneath the table, yeah. but now it won't stick, so we need a new sticky thing. So it's just hanging out, and I had to replug all these in, but everything sounds good. The camera, I am center today. Are you center today? I hope so. Don't you... mess up, baby. Sometimes I... Hello. You look good. Thanks. So we are good to go. Welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa <laughs> Show. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. Um, if you're, you haven't been to our channel before, we've been putting up videos for a couple years now, and we have a lot of fun. We have vlogs. We have a lot of interviews. If you're a Days of Our Lives fan, we have interviewed... How many Days of Our Lives co-stars of mine? 20, maybe? Is that a lot? I think it's been 20. Right? So you can look around. We have a few on iTunes as well, uh, most of them here on, on YouTube. And we have our great friend and, um, dare I say, sex symbol. <laughs> Eric Martsoff yeah. is on the show today. He actually uh, DM'd me and said, make sure you use sex symbol I'm sure when speaking did. about yeah, me. Of course. Um, no, he didn't do that. But Eric's an amazing guy. He's been on the on the show before, mm -hmm. and that's when we were doing uh, the audio portion of the show there mm -hmm. for about a couple months. So we haven't actually had him on video yet. So he was kind enough to come on. We had a great conversation. And, and let me just say his backdrop was minty. His backdrop was minty. Well, if we're ever going to use Zoom, because we have our setup here, so right. it, it works for us without a backdrop. But if you're ever doing a random, like when we were on the on a Zoom call in the living room, it probably would have been great to have a backdrop. It's good to know you can do you that because I've always seen that and I never really understood. And today we learned. So yeah, so we learned a lot, and uh, it, it's just it's it was a really good conversation, uh, and we, and I expected not, you know, of he's course, such an he's incredible human being very he easy really to talk is. to and, and, and me and eric have spent a lot of time together because we've worked together a little bit on days i'd say more than a little bit yeah. we're in a lot of scenes together and uh, we just had a lot in common over the years mm -hmm. and we've gone to fan events together so we've really built a great relationship and he's one of my favorite people so um he, he even before the podcast i was like should we write anything down in case there's a lull of silence that we have to ask questions and i was like no way. you're like there's no way so with <laughs> eric we didn't even have anything written down but anytime we're interviewing somebody, we never like to ask questions because it seems like too much of an interview, but we will have safety questions in case there's ever a law where both parties are like stumped. You right. don't want to have that awkward moment, so we'll have it. But with Eric, we didn't even feel we needed safety because we know each other so well. So we'll cue that up here in just a second. And um, I want to hop into our sponsor for today, Reset. We are introducing Reset to the podcast, The Freddie and Alyssa Show. So thank you, Reset. We actually had a Zoom meeting about a month or two ago, yeah. and I really appreciated how much this company cares about its messaging and its mission. They didn't just email us and say, hey, would you do this for the podcast? They're fans of the podcast, and they wanted to make sure that we knew what their mission was. And we sat through an entire slideshow, and we were really impressed. So we're like, we want to try these, and we definitely want to share this with our audience. So here they are. For those of you who are watching, or if you're listening on iTunes, I am holding up a beautifully marketed product here. They are natural stress support supplements called Reset for calming and unwinding. And let me just read off the back of the package yes. here, right here. Uh, they're caffeine-free, melatonin-free, sourced from natural ingredients, vegan, GMO-free, made in the USA, and it's known to ease stress, help with the nervous system, stimulates the body's natural defenses for your immunity, and uh, it's all natural. So I've been taking it now for a few days. I'm feeling really good, and I think there's a lot of stress in everyone's in life and in the world and if you can ever get yourself a little stress relief in an all natural way uh, you can definitely take a look at this you can go to target.com and check out reset which is spelled r3 set so they flip the e to a three it. so it's r3 set reset you can go to target.com or directly to their website at reset.com and they gave all of our listeners 10 percent off so if you type in no stress f a all one word at checkout, you'll receive 10% off, and you can give these a try. So welcome to the Family Reset. We appreciate you so much, and I, I don't want to keep the audience waiting yeah, any I longer. I think we should hop right on in. Let's hop in. Without further ado, the Eric, Eric Martzoff. When, how did you, so what do you do? Just Is this on Zoom? You can just put a background in? I, I was taught, because I was embarrassed of my background. I've been doing a couple Zooms since we've been locked in here, and I just have like like papers of my kids' doctor's appointments and stuff and realized that people could like snapshoot this yeah. and see that, you know, when my kids' tetanus shot and stuff. I mean, not that 
It just seemed no, weird. It's so, an invasion yeah. of privacy, yeah. yeah. Right, it's, and it's just ugly. And I have a fax machine behind, not a fax machine, a, a copier or whatever, and I'm like, I need something else. And someone DM'd me, um, I think someone that we actually know, and she said, yeah, you can put any picture in your photo gallery as your Zoom background. Is it pretty easy? It's a piece of cake. You go to settings and you go to virtual background and you say, add, add image and you go to your photos and you can huh. make, it's pretty, I know, right? Because <laughs> I've, I've seen it a lot too with like random photos. People will have like the- They'll be at the beach or something, yeah. <laughs> well, those come with the Zoom program that you can okay. actually, you can do your own. As you can see, I actually downloaded this picture and I have some obscene ones too, but you, you wanted this to be- PG, sorry. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, we, it's funny how we, because um, like as we continue to do Zooms and we continue to have guests on, there's things you learn along the way. So I was like, as I, I'm going to start putting a couple things into the uh, recommendations for our show because there's been people who've dropped so many F-bombs. I'm like, the editing was crazy trying to edit it out. And then there's people who have it long ways or the audio or there's no light. And I'm like, let me just put in some recommendations so that the actual final product has production value. So appreciate the uh, yeah, extra effort through. of the production value. You're, you're welcome, Eric whatever Trump. I can do, whatever I can do. But it will be PG, I'm not gonna G this thing, okay? I'm gonna, let's PG it. PG, yeah, that, that's Maybe the Maybe a little PG-13 from time yeah. to time. Okay with. <laughs> exactly. I'm How are you? It's good to see your faces. You as well. Yeah. When's the last time we actually saw each other in person? Did we run into each other in February on set at all or no? I can't even remember. This whole year has been such a blur. Yeah, I got I to gotta be honest with you. It, it, it is a blur. It is a giant blur. It's a blur that I wish we could just just wrap up and just kind of toss in the garbage and like just, just proceed to 2021 and just erase it all. But I don't know. Maybe, there's, maybe there is lessons in, in all this craziness that we're going through. I always, I always believe that, unfortunately, with human beings, it takes tragedy and horrific events to really wake people up sometimes. And and to make change happen. And, I, think that, I think that applies too with individuals, right? Like when people go through traumatic experiences of like losing a loved one or a divorce yeah. or getting fired or even with us, like when we went through our car accident in 2014, there's a distinctive shift in who you are as a person when you experience such a tragedy. You kind of see life differently and it makes you come out better. You grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, sometimes I think that's the only the only way we can grow is to to have that change forced upon us. Sometimes, uh, just just as things are happening right now in our world, you know, and we have to we have to roll with it and we have to evolve and and change with it. As hard as it is sometimes, but you're right. The the most the, the one universal thing everybody can relate to is losing someone in your world, and it 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 wakes you up and makes you realize that why am I sweating all this small mm -hmm. stuff? when we have a limited amount of time on this planet, why don't we just, why don't we just make the most of it while we're here instead of just worrying about the silliest things. And I'm guilty of that too. I, I'll get, I'll get upset about like a stain on the carpet. I'm like, did the dog pee? Like, is that pee or water? We need to get a paper towel right now and put it on. And if it's yellow, someone, <laughs> someone's going to be, you know, thrown outside. And I'm hearing myself and my kids are just looking at me like, yeah, it's fine. Well, you know, we can clean it up. It's fine. And then you step back and you go, God, you're right. This is ridiculous. Why am I making a big deal out of it? So we need to learn to just calm down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just communicate uh, with each other. And how are your uh how are your kids through the 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 pandemic? How are your kids through the protest? Because this is probably the first experience they've had at such a I mean even for us really yeah. I mean we were too young obviously for like the 90 you know for a different protest or riots that ever went on how, how did you explain I mean they're old enough to obviously understand the pandemic but w what's been your conversation with your teenage boys about both things that are going on oh it's funny I mean I mean the beauty of it is is they kind of look at me and this whole thing I said I did sit them down one night and I, I tried to explain to them as to what's going on why people are out there why they're riot, rioting and why what's happening they're just kind of looking at me and going you know dad what's what's the big deal and i said well there is a big deal he's like but, but dad we, we don't see you know we're they're just friends it doesn't matter what color they are it doesn't matter they're just our buddies you know our, our, and they're, they're sort of colorblind in that instance but my my job is to say but buddy you can't be completely colorblind you have to understand that there is a 
there's a certain amount of the population that has been repressed for a long time and we need to understand that um, that they're angry and that they're mad and we, we need to understand and educate ourselves. We need to open up our freaking ears and shut our mouths right now and, and, and learn and educate. And I said, even your father has things that he needs to learn. I've been here for a long time on the planet, but I don't know everything. I said, your grandfather, I said, my dad, he always said that the smartest man in the room was the one that was quiet and listening. He wasn't the one making statements and, and, and uh, there's the, uh, no, I don't think anybody's ever learned anything from making statements. The only way we learn and educate is to listen and to, and, and that's hard for some people to do. Uh -huh. I know you probably have people in your life that are just always going, yeah, I know, I know. It's a big phrase in our society. I know, I know. Maybe you don't, maybe, maybe you should wise up and, and just, just hear. So I've been doing a lot of listening through this whole thing. And, you know, I like to talk. <laughs> You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a communicator, but I think this is just a time to, to listen. And my, my, my grandmother also, also, she also told me back in the day when I was a kid, she said, there's two words that I hate, Eric, not hate. Uh, she didn't use hate. She said, uh, detest. And she said, it's bored. You never say you're bored. She hate, disgust, that disgusted her. And we don't hate. You never say you hate. Hate is a bad word. I'd rather you said the F word or the S word or those other words, there is no room in our family to say, I don't want to hear you say you hate strawberry ice cream. I don't want to hear you say you hate anything. And uh, I, I took that to my kids from a very early age and tried to teach them that that word has no place uh, in our family, in our world, because there's, there's, there's not enough time to hate. You need, you, you need to love. And there's plenty of reasons to love people. You know, okay. No matter where they're from or what they look like everyone has great aspects about themselves. So you got to dig and find those reasons to love instead of just going so quickly to the other side. And wow, it's got, it's got deep. I yeah. love it. I lo how, did they, how did they respond? Do you feel, because I try to look back when I was, your, your boys are 15? They're 14. They think they're 16, but they're 14. They, they, they look, look like 16. they're 21. <laughs> they look 21. They look like they should like drive a truck to work. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Those are those uh, mark top jeans. They just had their physicals yesterday. One is they're they're 150 pounds, and one is six feet, and one is five ten. They're monsters. What? And they're fort freaking team. Well, they're swimmers too, right? Because I saw I, you posted something Olympic ish. Yes. Well, they they've been selected for the ODP, uh, which is the Olympic Development Training Program. Wow. Um, and this, all this momentum was happening in their little water polo career right when the pandemic hit. And since then, they haven't been able to be in the pools and all of the competitions have stopped. So we're struggling to like find ways to keep them in it and keep them, keep them active. They, they're going to high school next year for the first time and they want to play water polo, but we don't even know if that's going to happen. So it's, they had all this momentum going and it just had to stop. But it's funny we, we that we still try to get together with the team and they condition but they do it they distance while they condition like they run up the big sand hill that's off the pch mm -hmm. uh, together and they 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 you know they're trying to maintain a team spirit while trying to stay apart from one another and it's really hard and yeah. it's funny that it's funny that falls right into the whole pandemic thing the way i explained it to them is you know, they're really into team sports right now. And said, well, the reason we got these masks on, buddy, is the same reason why, why you know, NFL players, they wear their helmets. Uh, it's widely known that they're better off wearing this protective gear. And even the coolest and dopest of football players wear their helmets, okay? It's not like the really cool guys and stronger players go out there without a helmet. That's why we put our masks on. Those are our football helmets that we collectively as a team realized uh, we're better off wearing these. Uh, even if we might, might want to show my hair and you know, it does cover my cool hairstyle and this, but it might save my life. Yeah. So it's worth it. You know, I, they get I, that. I like that. Have you ever read the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People? No, but I've heard about it. I've, you would yeah. love that book. But the way you just taught your kids that is a, uh, there was an example in the book where this uh they're like a five-year-old child didn't want to go to kindergarten and they were petrified and instead of the parents like scolding them or or going after them saying no you're going the parents went into their kitchen and started working on a fun project together 
and the kid came in and said, oh, I want to do it. And they said, you have to be in kindergarten or above to work on this project together. And so the kid was eager to go to school so that he could come home and be part of the big boy group and, and make this project. But it was essentially how, how to win friends and influence people in every scenario of your life. Um, that was like a perfect example. Like you made wearing masks like super cool. Even the coolest and dopest. Yeah, like that was such an yeah. interesting way to, um, to, to, to teach that. Because I, I, yeah. I always look back when I was 14 and 15, I don't remember much. Like I feel like as a 14 or 15 year old, we're, we're so in our heads about girls or boys or driving or school and, and trying to just grow up and be cool and meet friends that can it's we important. really understand what is going on in the world and it's always fascinating to me to, to talk to, to people who, who have like a 14, 15 year old or, or, or younger kids of how, how do you teach them when they don't really have the experience of life? Like I feel it hits us because we, we've lived. You, you, have to, you, you have to relate and put things on their, uh, on their level. I mean, a, 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 another silly example, I walked into Chase's room. He's just been watching all the Avenger movies. Like he, he just watches from the beginning to the end, like the first Iron Man to the, to the last uh, whatever it is. And uh, I walked in, I'm like, wow, you know what, you know what I see in common with all these superheroes? A lot of them have masks on, man. <laughs> Isn't it funny that these kids, the, 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 the number one guy they admire most in their superhero world is Iron Man, who wears a giant mask. So I'm like, buddy, don't, don't ever think that wearing this thing out in public makes you weak by any means, because uh, I think the toughest, coolest, flyest bros out there uh, wear masks. So don't worry about it. And uh, since then, we were we went we were at Bass Lake actually this this past weekend, and it was lovely. We got got away, and, and uh, without even having to ask them, we walked out of the the little cabin or whatever, and they had their masks on. You know, and I didn't even have to say, "Oh, get get your mask." They they put it on without me saying a thing, which which was a little proud moment for Lisa and I. We kind of looked at each other because it was a because it was an issue before. Yeah. It's, it's uncomfortable, you know why? You know why? Do, come on. You know, I've heard things on, on uh, social media that we don't need to anymore. And there's all this misinformation going. That's another thing, Freddie. It is, I just want an unbiased news source. Just give me the facts. And, and just, you get so many different opinions and, and misinformation going on right now. I just, I want the truth. You know, just tell yeah. us. Ooh. It's crazy, though, too, with social media, especially for your kids, because they're on all these different platforms, seeing all these different videos and getting that content right in front of them where you're like, wait, what are you listening to? What is that? And it's, it's kind of scary how quickly things can get to the youth. And that's their news source. You know, yeah. that, that phone is there. And I'm, I'm guilty as well, man. I, I it's, oh, yeah. it's tough. It's we really watch tough. more on Twitter, Twitter and social yeah. But the, the problem is, is, like you said, it's like people also don't have the time to read 72 articles to come to a truth of their own. You kind of rely on the headlines. You kind of rely on your favorite network or source or person you follow. Uh, but that's not good because we're getting misinformation. Like, why can't there just be one channel, one source that is, they've done the work, you know, because they've got the time and do it for a living. And then we get to just quickly at dinner, watch for 15 minutes, make our decisions, make our choices, educated choices, and then move forward. But I think there's, you know, not, I, we don't need to unpack all that, but I, I, there, I think there is um, <laughs> yeah, obviously a... <laughs> uh, incentives for us to be confused and at each other. It seems well. Those are uh, you know, the, the media, the, the the influence of large corporations has influenced and, and politicized, and, and it's no longer just the facts. It's very much opinionated, and just trying to get the news per se is is a very difficult task in itself these days. Yeah, the, the evolving that we're that we're going to have to do with just communication because we have all this power to just talk, have our opinions. And I just think we're going to look back through this next decade of the 2020s and we're going to look back and remember this was the time it was the wild, wild west of communication because there's got to be some sort of, you know, calm of the ocean here because there's just so many waves because we're all just talking. Yeah. So eventually I feel it's going to have to calm down where we can all be civil at some point. Right. I, so. I mean, I, I, it's funny. I wrote my senior thesis on, uh, on, uh, well, I, I was a political science graduate at, at Dickinson College many, many moons ago. And the whole thing was, was based on the fact that 
that I, I wrote this paper on the dissolution of partisan politics, that eventually uh, the, the, the parties will just kind of dissolve and it'll, it'll just be, uh, you know, issue based. And I, I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> on my paper, I wish I could rewrite that thing. But I had a dream, I had a hope that you know people would just take the issues and be able to think. And now we're just so there's such a division right now. It's so frustrating. Now maybe it'll so come. Good. That that's how you have to. That's why I hope. I'm like, well, maybe that is true. It's just taking time. Thirty years from now, yeah, we're, years, we're slowly evolving. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully all this stuff, like going back to what we said before. I'm hoping all these knocks that we're taking right now as a society will eventually, you know, just put some shine on us, you know, inevitably, and we'll, we'll come out of this better people and with a better understanding and just a better society. That's what I'm hoping to leave for my kids. You know, yeah. that's, that's my wish right now. You stop thinking about how your life is going and you really start putting in perspective, like, what am I going to leave them with? You know, I'm sure as a kid, I threw a Coke bottle in the ocean and think, you know, in the lake or whatever, and think anything. I think about it now. Yeah. I think about it now. I'm willing to suck on that paper straw because I look at my kids. I'm like, I don't want to leave them with, you know, I want to be, to be able to jump into the ocean when they're 45 years old and not have to worry about, you know, going through a plastic layer of whatever. Or whatever, yeah. yeah. You just, you just your, your, your degree of caring just kind of goes up a couple notches when you when you think about the future with children. And I think I think that's pretty much our, our whole point, right? Is that how do we leave the place better for the next generation and continue this evolution? And and we just got hit with all of it at once, which I think we needed this big of a punch to the gut to make real change on so many levels. And I agree. All kind of boiled up to this point. And you know, I and I'm I'm just curious too, like what what's next you know for all of it i'm kind of just taken day by day and this is the first time in our life that we can't plan anything like i can't look ahead to what i'm yeah. going to do in august i just got to go well, i'm gonna wake up today what can i do to make today successful because what the hell's going to happen like yeah. in august like I i'm curious to ask you too i know we dm'd about it a little bit um but what do you think about days like what's your opinion on on the entertainment industry in general uh, days uh, and then just people going back to work as a whole. That's a that's that's the momentous question right now. And and you know my my opinion on it would just be a guess. You're you're absolutely right. We're going day by day right now, and people are talking about you know second wave of coronavirus. No, we're not in the second wave. This is still the first wave. Just because we've ignored it for a while and put it on the back burner doesn't mean it's still not there. Unfortunately, our cases are rising in Los Angeles County. It's 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 not subsiding at all, and until that subsiding, you know, goes down, we're, we're not going to get back to work anytime soon. I mean, I, I know Bold and Beautiful tried to, they tried to, you know, bring it back last week. They had one day of production and realized that, no, we need more testing and more protocol. This, this is not sufficient enough. Uh, apparently, they're going to try to go back. I think they went back today as well. But they're, they're coming into roadblocks one after another that are impeding this filming process. And it's, it's worrisome. I think uh, I haven't I haven't heard a peep from from days. I don't know when they plan to get back. Young and the Restless supposedly is going back July sixth, so there's attempts being made. I um, I'm just you know I'm I'm worried you guys about <laughs> just our, our 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 ignorance in the sense that we we just because we ignore it doesn't it means it's going to go away. It's not going to go away anytime soon as long as this virus has a host. As long as we we give it accessibility to to hosts, it's going to stick around. You know these these little guys, these little viruses. These, these are some of the most powerful animals on the planet. They will, you know, probably one day, one day, they will win. But yeah. so, do you think at the Bold and the Beautiful that they did testing prior to shooting? Because that's what we were kind of talking about. I'm like, I can't imagine production ever happening again unless they test every day everyone who's going into this area to work that's my that's my assumption Alyssa. is yeah okay. that, they, that they that they probably test every day hmm. take temperatures and and but i i don't know i haven't spoken to any hmm. any of my friends over there i, I i'm sure they're keeping it pretty tight as yeah. far as the information they're they're throwing out there but uh I, I hope our show is talking to their show and they're they're realizing what works and what doesn't and we'll we'll, we'll get back to shooting pretty soon I know my wife is ready to just, you know, throw me <laughs> <laughs> no, look, we love each other. We talk about marriage and relationships. They're, they're hard, but they're, 
they're very hard during a pandemic, you know, because man, you are with each other all the time. And uh, that can be hard sometimes, you know, you get in each other's <laughs> way. We're in a home yeah. right now that has a kitchen about the, like the size of a bathroom. So when you have two teenage boys and myself and Lisa all trying to prepare a meal together in a bathroom, it doesn't work. Doesn't uh, work. Things get a little testy. We, we, were, okay. we were just saying that this morning because we uh, just for whatever reason, we look around sometimes and go, it's just us two here. Why is the house so messy? And I literally just told her this morning, <laughs> I go, what if we had three kids on top of this? Like what, how, I, I don't even know. I mean, if you looked around, like it's a little embarrassing literally, of how messy it is. Literally, I clean everything because he doesn't like to clean up. So if one morning I'm just off of duty, it's so messy. <laughs> oh, by the way, literally when you have those kids and you, you'll have them, um, they will look at you and say, will you get out of my way? And I'm like, okay, you're preparing food that I bought you on pans that I provided in a home that I give you. you I'm, 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 am I in your way? I'm so sorry, buddy. Let me just drag my butt out to the garage and I'll sit there and eat a Twinkie while you enjoy a hot omelet. <laughs> Father, oh um, by the way, love you, but uh, <laughs> you're in my way. <laughs> so at this age they're at, do you, are you noticing a lot of differences in they want to just do their own thing now? Like they don't really care to hang with the parents or is it a mixture of both? Cause 14. My, my wife is uh, understandably upset. They're, they're a little bit about dad right now, honestly. Okay. I'll be honest with you. My, my son, uh, he's actually wearing one of my wedding rings. Um, he, he, he likes to, he's interested in wearing clothes that I have. He, he's kind of catering his look. And I'm like, be careful, dude. Your dad's not the stylish guy in the world. I like just, you know, you know, you might as well buy 20 black t-shirts and call it a ball game. But he he's showing interest in that. And and Chase is asking my opinion about working out and we're in the garage all the time. So so we have more common elements than than mom does with them right now. And that's okay because I remember the first like five, six years of their lives when they were infants, it was all about mom. Mm -hmm. They needed mom literally to survive. Yeah. Well, you know, she was nourishing them. She was feeding them. She was. So I remember sitting there and thinking, when is dad's turn? When is dad's turn? And it's now. It's now. I'm, um, I'm very influential over their world right now. And I just put my arm around Lisa and I say, just, 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 just ride in the passenger seat for a second. You know, we'll, we'll get over this. I mean, they'll, they'll come back to you. And they do. Of course. They do. They will. It'll come first, full, full circle. Yeah. I feel like we're because we talk to both our parents all uh -huh. the time and it, and it works, but we, we've been going through a huge phase of, and I think obviously because of everything going on in the world and we're approaching our, we just hit our 14th anniversary of being in LA away from our families. And, um, you know, just this time makes you start thinking everyone's getting older and we're trying to figure out our next move of, do we just keep spending all this precious time away? Cause our parents are in their sixties, her dad's 70. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, at what point do we, we just give all that those moments up. So we're trying to figure out what our next move is. And it seems even with the acting business, other than like obviously going back to days, that will be a full year, you know, you work here, in but in, in, in LA, but, it, but even like recently we've been auditioning on tape and it seems like everything can be done online for the most part at this point. I feel it's only going to get more like that. And it would be so cool just to kind of live in the East coast or Florida or be closer to the parents and then just fly in to work but yeah. not like, live here and miss out on all these opportunities or all these like moments. But again, can't make those plans because can't I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And, and I'm in an interesting position with days because you know, they rested. I like the way that Chandler put it, like that our, our characters are being rested. So yeah. we we're going to let go for a moment, but we also now with this, everything's pushed back. So if we were going to be called back in July, it, for instance, it's July. <laughs> it's July, but now are they so, paused for three months? So does that mean November? So you can't really wait for that either. So uh, everything's just up in the air, and it's just like, you know. But I'm. I think we're in a good place, you know. Yeah. And you seem in a good place too. Your spirits are up. You're you're doing well. Like I think we've come out uh, of the anxiety, have, thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Freddie. I mean, I'm I'm putting on a pretty good face right now for this lovely show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dude, I'm, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, there's been some miserable times. I mean, I'm, I'm, you, know, you know me, I'm a social guy. I, I need to be around people. And 
to be told that I can't be is, is very, very difficult for me. And I've, mm. I've, I've taken the time and focused towards my family and my kids. And I've had some of the best conversations with my boys uh, because of the pandemic. You know, they're, they're kind of forced to stay here. So I got them. I got, they're within an earshot all the time. Um, but it's hard. I, I understand what you're saying, though. I mean, Missy Reeves has been doing that whole commuting back and forth for, for many, many years. And to establish a home outside of L.A., which is going to stretch your dime a hell of a lot more. Yeah. Um, it's very, very attractive to many people. And a lot of actors have done it. I mean, granted, usually it's the actors that have the nest egg or the syndicated show to be able to yeah. move out of L.A. Until you get that golden opportunity, you feel like you kind of have to stay here and, and struggle until your time, you know, when, when luck meets preparation, as I always, I, I love that phrase, you know, that's, those are the folks that win this LA game and you're grinders, you know, and I, I admire it. I admire that grind that you guys have because I, um, I, I, I like, I like those folks that stick it out. <laughs> and, Thanks. And, you know, and over, overnight successes are far and in between. But, you know, overnight success. They weren't an overnight. Like Van Halen, they they played you know local clubs and didn't get paid anything for like years and years and years. And, and they came. Oh, they're an overnight success. No one is. Uh uh. You think they are until you hear their story. Right. The grind is what makes us valuable. And it's remember Tom Hanks in A League of Their Own. And Gina Davis is like, uh, she's like, I just had to quit. It's just too hard. He's like, it's supposed to be hard. The hard is what makes it great. Then he walks away. She's like, then she shows up for the ball game the next day. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. So, but my, my wife and I, we, we yearn for an easier way of life. We talked about it. We talked about moving out of LA, and just flying. I'd, I would just fly my butt in for my episodes and fly out. But... <laughs> It's a there's, lot. Never a good, there's never a good time to pull that trigger, by the way, you guys. If you're thinking about doing something, there's never the right time. Like, I think we talked about this with kids. Like, when do you do it? Well, I, well, I have to wait for the right time when I have the right money and the right house and the right job and the right. There's never, that's never, that's never going to be, most likely. So you just yeah, you just got to do, do it when it, when it feels when it right. Happens. Yeah, that's what we're, we're doing. The whole experience has just been, has just been interesting because we, we've been learning a lot and with every endeavor we, we do, we're basically, we're planning for a moment like this where we go eventually, um, I won't be on days anymore or, or days will be no longer or God knows what else would happen. And so we're always hustling, but it, it's, we keep learning and we apply those new lessons to the next thing that we do. And we feel we're getting better and better each and every day. And then you start recognizing, um, you know, people who like, even like yourself, uh, me and Alyssa were talking about, cause we, we've had a bunch of people on the podcast. We've reached out to a bunch of people and this might seem like the littlest thing to you, but I'm just curious on your take. Um, just how easy and how professional and how awesome you are in the entirety of our relationship. And it showed even with this podcast of a simple like, hey man, do you want to be on the show? Like, we'd love to have you. And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, how about Wednesday? You're like, cool. And then I send you a Zoom link and then you write back five minutes later. You're like, cool. Like, got it. I'll see you there. Like, it was so easy. And I feel like because you're just professional and you care and you'd be surprised on how many people, not in just podcasting, but in everything we've yeah. done, how many people are not self-aware, responsible, yeah. they're difficult, they're flaky. <laughs> um, do, do you find that your professionalism and your like ease and just who you are is something you've worked on and you've made adjustments in life? Or do you, what do you think it is with certain people who just are all over the place, have no plan, so they don't get the preparation meets luck? because you can see they're just busy doing nothing, but you, you're such a focused guy and so professional. And I'm just curious, like, is that something you've taught yourself or have you always been that way? Or what, what's your take on all that? That's, well, th first of all, thank you for, for what you said. Um, when I graduated from college, I, 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 I was pursuing the law and I, I thought that's what my father wanted me to do. He was a lawyer as well. And forgive me if you've heard the story, but it, it pertains to your question. And I was so worried to tell him that I, I didn't want to go to law school. I just wanted to go to New York for like a year or two and do acting. And the ease in which my father just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders and went, yeah, you should, you should do that. And the relief that just poured over like, oh, wait, so this isn't going to be like a deep, crazy conversation. Like, why would you pursue said Why? No, Eric, it's, it's great. I, I love you. I support you. I need to go, go do what you need to do. And I think that was one of those moments where I, I understood 
that things don't have to be that difficult. That, 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 that you calling me up and saying, hey man, you wanna come on my podcast and, I, I, and, and you've worked so hard at this thing and it's a no brainer. You've always been kind to me. You've always been good. Like, yes, of course. And I'm gonna be on time because I'm gonna respect your time. Like being on time is the least you can do for someone. <laughs> Like it's the very least, you know, um, I'm not, you're not, you know, I'm not asking you to wash my car to pick me up from the airport. Just be on time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pandemic. I know you don't have lots of other things to do. Maybe you're going to wash your underwear today. Maybe you're going to make macaroni and cheese, but be on time, you know? And I just think those, those little things pay dividends, Freddie. I, I would attribute my success with NBC for the last 18 years of employment with them on two different shows isn't because I've, I'm this ridiculously talented man uh, who just can't be replaced with anyone else in the United States. I think, I think I've been on time. I think I've known my stuff. I think I've gotten along with people that I've worked with. And if there's ever been an issue, I've always tried to resolve it very quickly. Just stuff you've learned in grade school about getting along with people and, and manners they just go a long way because eventually producers are only, they're going to want to come to work and have an easy day and know that they're going to want to hire people that have not caused them issues, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, and it's okay to have your opinions, but do your job and be quiet and, and get out of the studio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the flakiness of, 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 of people sometimes it really it, it almost feels like they go out of their way to become difficult because somewhere along the way someone told them that hey man you need to, you 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 need to stand up for yourself and if you don't think something is right you need to scream about it you need to have a loud trumpet you need to make noise stand up for your rights and you may get what you want at that moment in time mm -hmm. but i don't think it's gonna pay dividends down the road i think people are gonna be like yeah you know they're a pain in the rump yeah and, they're not going to want to hire you. So just, just be easy and do your gig and, and, and ride the wave. And I think a lot of people also misunderstand that, that their job doesn't exactly, that, that doesn't define who you are as well. You know, we, we, do, we do jobs in this world so we can take the coins from the job and put it towards the people that we love in our lives and to make our lives better. That's that's where the life is supposed to come in. You can have a great time at your job. Don't get me wrong. I know I do, and I'm thankful and I love my job. But just because you don't agree with what your character is doing at the time, that doesn't define you. That has nothing to do with you. You know, Brady's misfortunes and his inability to fall in love and make all the worst decisions in the world have nothing to do with Eric Martzoff. And I, I've come to terms with that. I'm okay with that. For God's sakes, I was just in bed with you know Lindsay Godfrey, and I I basically. <coughs> couldn't perform in bed. That was my scene. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, this has never happened to me before. And I'm like, go ahead, tape it. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, really? Oh, but wow. That's Brady. That ain't me. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. Yeah, man, I, and, and, it, and everything you just said. Oh, wait, I lost you. You're muted. <laughs> oh, can you hear can't me? Hear you. Oh, there you are. Um, no, what I was going to say, everything you, everything you just said is, is, uh, spot on, um, minus what happens in the bedroom. I, I don't know that about you, uh, personally, but we I do do another show on that if you want. That'll be our part two. Um, After dark. but, uh, yeah, but, your, but your, yeah, but your, um, but your talent professionalism, it, it all shines through. And, and that's why I feel like I've always looked up to you and I've always appreciated your friendship and our working relationship because anytime we've gone to an event together, anytime we've had scenes together, um, it just goes, it goes a long way. And, uh, and I just appreciate how, how great you are as a person and as a coworker, you know, it goes a long way, man. It, 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 it's something like, I feel like regardless of even what happens with days or where we all live, like you're somebody that I feel I'll always have a connection to and that will always stay in touch because you've made such a big impression on me over the years. Dude, that, that is, that is so nice of you to say, and I, I can absolutely return the favor. I, you know, I admire your hustle, both of you. I think you're, you're a terrific couple and I think you're, you just, you just make each other better together. And your, 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 your projects 
have such class and quality behind them. Like the research that you do, it shows through. You know, you don't just throw things together. You're 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 a man of substance, man. Everyone loves you in that studio, and you know your departure from the show is is one that I will you know just question until the cows come home because I think you guys have been rested. You're too damn important to the show. Both you and Will have created this. It's it's a historic couplehood. It's it's beautiful. It's terrific. It's groundbreaking. There's no reason that it won't return in due time. And I think you're right. So don't make any big plans in Jan July because you'll probably be back. <laughs> yeah, I really hope so, man. It'll be- <laughs> You'll move to Wisconsin and then they'll be like, uh, Freddie, can you be there tomorrow morning and make up? And they, That's I'm, actually what- I'm riding my horse on my new ranch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to us once before. We moved to Florida in what, 2016? And right before we were moving, he got the call to come back and he's like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. like, Man well, makes plans and God laughs. <laughs> yeah. Laughs. But, uh, oh, this is what you had planned? Hold on a second. Let me there you go. It There's up. a little wrench in the deal. Yeah, try that one. Um, the, uh, and then before, before we take off, uh, I just wanted to, I don't really have a point to this story, but I just found it amusing and I laugh about it every now and then when I think about it. Um, right. Our fan event in New York, the Sleepy Hollow fan event that we went to, like last yeah. Christmas. I, I remember just sitting one day, and I don't know why I thought of this, but when we were, me, you, and Greg just went to this random restaurant, and remember we grabbed a burger and a drink in between our lunch break, and- uh, by, the by the water, that right? Yes, yeah. yes. And it just always makes me realize just how crazy that this job has brought people together, and how us three in no other circumstance in the world would be <laughs> sitting in a random city in New York having a burger at two o'clock in the afternoon, and then I remember that day because Greg drove, he showed up 15 <laughs> minutes late and he had to pay an extra day on his rental car because he didn't get there in time. <laughs> Again, don't be late. Yeah, don't be late. There you go. Don't be late. Whether, whether you're showing up to be a soap opera star or you got a rental car that's due, don't be late. Don't but, be late. Yeah, Freddie, you know what? It's, it, I'm, I'm so glad that sticks out for you because it sticks out for me too. That was just... A, a quick little departure of three guys that were just in the middle of this fan event. We were all exhausted. We all had jet lag, but you know what? We all sat at a table and just kind of breathed deeply and <laughs> just looked at each other. And those are moments that you'll, you'll just take away that for, for, and that's, that's one of the reasons I do a lot of these fan events. I have a lot of those little moments with, with uh, actors that I wouldn't necessarily have at the set and doing our, our little play that we do over at days, but, you know, outside of it, and it's just, it's just, it's just great to have those little moments of humanity with each other. That that we're all in the same boat, and we're all just, we all got the same common denominator here. And we're a bunch of actors, and we're all going to eat shrimp in some weird restaurant in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and it's great. It's that's what life is about. Those moments, you know, that's life. Yeah, that's life. Yeah, because you definitely build those moments when we, when we do fan events, and and you just. Yeah, you're right. You're in that same circumstance and you're you're all experiencing it together. And and I wish we could all do more, you know, just like with the show in general and and with events. It's like because you build that bond and we never really get that much time on set to hang out with each other, you know, other than the people you work with regularly. Oh, but yeah. but most of most of my best yeah, most of my friendships are really grounded in those those soap events. You know, we have our time in the makeup room, but you know, worker bees like you, 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 you we're into our stuff. We're, in, we're there to do our scene work and to get our stuff done. You know, some, some socialize more than they probably should. And, and I'm guilty of that sometimes. But it's like, maybe, maybe you want to pay a little more attention to your script today. Huh? Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, this is some heavy stuff and a lot of people's storylines are dependent upon it. So why don't you go downstairs and learn your stuff? Um, <laughs> are you just taking out your scenes right now from the actual script? We're up in 15 minutes and you have a three page monologue. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. It's a funeral. You might want to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hey man, you know, we're, I think we're, we're all just getting through this the best we can. And I'm, I'm trying to laugh through all these issues in our world right now. It's because I'm a man that believes laughter is the key. That's, that's the medicine to everything. But it's tricky these days, mm. but you get you got you got to find the good in all this. And once again, I'm I'm just hoping we come out better as people with a better understanding of what's going on and why we're why we're in what we're in right now. Yep. 
exactly. Well, dude, I, I appreciate you so much um, for spending this time with us yeah, and being you. on the show. This is your second time, and oh, we appreciate yeah. you so much. And uh, I love it. I'm a veteran on the Freddie Lewis show. <laughs> you are. You are. We got to do Doesn't SNL have a jacket after five times or something? Don't they get a jacket uh, on SNL? Yeah, they do. Is it five times? Yeah. So like maybe Alec, we'll do that. Who has it? Alec Baldwin? Uh, I think Tom Hanks has one too, right? Yeah. Tom Hanks probably does. Probably like Will Ferrell and people like that, maybe. Have hosted, yeah, maybe. I don't know, but you're right. You should. What, what are you going to give for a... We got to think of something. On, on the fifth time a guest comes on, we'll, we'll send them something. We'll have to figure okay. that out. We probably won't have to worry about that for another year or so, but then we're going to do something <laughs> drastic. Like maybe, maybe a suit jacket would work. Who knows? How about a, how about a, 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 a black tank top with uh, Freddie and Alyssa in gold? All the way down. But we'll, we'll send it where it's like two sizes too small, just so that it's hilarious. And well, then you know, you know I prefer my tank tops from Baby Gap, but they all, they're always double X, L, but they are top number. So that they're... They just, they fit better. They do. They fit better and they show all the muscle. <laughs> no, my, my wife has just made fun of me so much. She's like, Eric, please wear some clothes that fit you, for God's sake. <laughs> She's right. There's some, day, there's some days where I'm like, I don't like to throw away my clothes. You know, and I was, you know, slightly smaller a couple of years ago, so I still keep the same shirts. And I'm like, I should probably throw this out. It's bad. So, you rock it out, man. Trying to loosen my clothes up a little bit. I'm, I'm not 20 anymore, man. I can't be doing that. But <laughs> Eric Burtsoff can do whatever the f he wants. Period. Yeah, <laughs> let's just do whatever we want, as long as we're on time. Yes. As long as we're on yes. time. Yes. As long it. as I'm on time, I will show up in any damn tank top I want. <laughs> I love it, brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, have fun with the boys and, um, and the wifey. And the wifey. And then, uh, yeah, let's stay in touch. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get some answers of the show, you know, in the next couple weeks or month, and then we'll we'll have some answers. I hope to God we do. But thank you guys for doing what you do. I appreciate being a guest, and uh, uh, I'm a fan of your couplehood. Always have Aww. been. So. Awesome, brother. Well, thank we you so much. You so and much. Uh, we'll have this probably out in like a week or so. So I'll shoot you a text or a DM and let you know. And uh, I shall repost. Oh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Spread in the love. Spread in the love. All guys. right, brother. Well, enjoy your day, your day and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Cheers. All right, Take care. Bye.